Let me introduce Dr. R. Velraj, Vice Chancellor, Anna University and Professor, Institute for Energy Studies. His expertise and specialization are in the areas of thermal energy storage, solar energy, desalination, energy efficient buildings, energy auditing and management, and fundamental studies of heat transfer and computational fluid dynamics. As far as his educational qualification is concerned, he has completed his Bachelor of Engineering, Mechanical, Annamala University, Masters on Energy Engineering, Anna University, and PhD at Anna University. A part of his doctoral research was carried out in Solar Institute, uh, Julich, Germany, for the period of 20 months from 95 to 97 under DAD Fellowship by Germany. He has an administrative experience of more than 14 years in various capacities. His research credentials are spectacular. He has executed 15 sponsored research projects, published more than 20 to 25 research articles in journals of high repute, completed supervision of 37 PhD scholars. He has scientific citation 10,150 with age index of 52. He is associated with various consultancy, industrial collaborations, and technology transfer. In fact, he has implemented various green initiatives and other significant contributions to the society. Respected Vice Chancellor Dr. Peer Muhammad, the organizing committee members, and all delegates who have come for this Congress. I am very happy to address some few thoughts about my sustainable building architecture. The focus is energy, environment, health. Most of the focus is on energy for the benefit of environment. My focus of this presentation will be towards energy, which will safeguard this environment. <clears throat> so it is about passive architecture. Yeah, next slide. First, I would like to give few information about this energy. Very recently, the talk about energy and environment is there in a large way. For our human comfort, we need energy. For human comfort, we started using energy very recently in a large way. You should know at the time of our independence, the total power generation in the country was only 1,500 megawatt. The total power generation in the country itself was 1,500 megawatt. But after 70 years, now it's more than 4 lakh megawatt, several fold. 1500 in 1947 became now more than 4 lakh megawatt. But still we are in the developing stage. So you should know around 2040 what kind of energy we need, <coughs> what quantum of energy we need. For better lifestyle, we need energy. But when we make energy, when we generate energy, it is possible at the cost of making disorder to the environment. That is law of nature. When you want something, it is possible at the cost of making some disaster. So that uh, we understood very, in the recent years only, we understood the effect of this uh, environment danger. The environment also, I would like to tell some few points. At the time of evolution of the earth, the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere was only 65 ppm, parts per million. The carbon dioxide level is a measure to evaluate the degradation level of the atmosphere. Our planet also you can see the carbon dioxide level which will indicate the damage we make in the atmosphere. So after several millions of years before this industrialization started around the year 9800, the 65 became 1000, sorry, 65 became 165 ppm. The major industrialization, automobile revolution, use of fossil fuel which were available in the earth over millions of years, we have started using only in the last 200 years. Now this 165 ppm became 365 ppm in 2000. 
in the last 20 years 22 years this 365 ppm became 415 365 to 415 ppm every year an increase of 2.5 to 23 ppm increase is happening in the atmosphere the carbon dioxide level you should be careful here every year 2.5 ppm from 415 ppm it started increasing you know now every year it is increasing if it reaches 600 ppm no human being can live in this planet so how many years are there you can assess so another uh, 50 to 75 years if we progress like this so but the environmental scientist understood about this requirement and now everybody is talking about earlier days non-conventional sources of energy some 30 years ago we, when we studied some uh, our graduation we started telling about conventional energy to non-conventional energy then over a period it should be the word has changed to renewable energy then this renewable to sustainable energy now we are all talking about sustainable sustainability means whatever sources which are sustainable sustain the solar energy only is sustainable so we should use only sustainable sources for the for our life comfort for our life comfort we need energy but i told you all because of use of this large quantity of energy only we are making the atmosphere disaster understood so that too the major population of this world is there in two countries india and china 40 percentage of the more than 40 percentage of the world population is there in india and china their economy level has started increasing in the last two two to three decades so still it is another two to three decades the, the increasing level you can see how india is progressing here you see okay before i touch this the major contribution of energy is mostly in automobile sector one sector which is using our fossil fuel in a large way the second sector which consumes large quantity of energy is building so i'm going to talk about building sector the major energy in any country 40 percentage of the energy generated in any country is used for building cooling or heating so that is the next after this automobile requirement the energy required for building is 40 percentage if it's a hot country for cooling you need energy more most part of the electricity generated you will be using for cooling the building if it's a cold country you will be using for heating so anyway 40 percentage of the energy is used in building so if we make this energy in a conservative way or in a passive way then you can re reduce this energy consumption so that is what my research and i am going to tell about this so you you clearly understood why we need to focus on building sector it is the second largest sector of energy consume consuming sector so energy if you use it is at the cost of making high disaster to the environment that everyone should know so you should you can see here india every year the growth of building is 2.7 percentage that itself shows the economy is very increasing rate is very high if the buildings are high in, in a, coming in a large scale means it shows the economic increase in level so india now as of now in the whole world the indian economy is go, growing in a fastest way so we are, that means what we are going to contribute maximum danger to the environment india is going to contribute maximum danger to the environment all these days we we have lived we lived in a sustainable way but now we also need a lot of life comfort we want all very good cars and all our rooms should be air conditioned in a proper way so some 25 years in our university when i joined in our university only some uh, or we, some hardly some bc registrar director their three rooms only were air conditioned now some 3000 to 4000 air conditions are there after in the last 25 years one more thing more than 60 percentage of the building which will be in 2040 in this country is going to come in the coming years more than 60 percentage of the building which will be in 2040 is going to come in the next 20 to 18 years so that means how much what is the growth of this 
this building construction side how it is going to happen so now we understood the danger what it will make if it is not constructed in a passive way if it is not constructed in a passive way we can um, what uh, that too i if i don't know how many of your civil engineers the civil engineering olden days our indian architecture are very good it's all constructed in a passive way it's all if you see our old and temple very good palaces if you see they don't require any heating or cooling system without that one can live because the sun's energy whatever it's coming till evening 6 o'clock will be absorbed by this building wall high thermal mass building high thermal mass building but our lasted 50 50 years the our civil engineering revolution what it took no they studied uh, you uh, many of you if you are uh, civil engineers or if your friends are civil engineers you must be knowing civil engineering they have studied lot of material strength am i right material strength with their powerful knowledge they could construct the building thickness from here to this because this building it's this thick, thin wall itself is a capable of capable of withstanding this total building strength that is total weight of the building but you should know the civil engineers they never studied about any thermal subject am i right in the, in the syllabus if you see it, our uh, civil engineers they are not studying any uh, anything about but building is not only strength of the material it is also about how to cool it heat it am i right so our uh, our revolution in civil engineering in the last 50 years what it made finally we co constructed very low thermal mass building even at a morning sun rises at 6 o'clock even at a, immediately after 11 o'clock the sun's energy will enter into the building am i right because of the great contribution of civil engineers am i right what, what one thing from this what one can understood this any research i am also a researcher in particular field if we make some research we do not know everything whatever any if any field engineers know is very little whatever we contribute for this field will make damage in the surrounding that is the law of nature now all scientists they know something they can invent something at the cost of making disaster disaster to the another field then they will start working on that and they will make disaster to the another field finally the atmosphere is the sink which will absorb all the sin whatever all the scientists make whatever scientists the sin make will be absorbed by the sink atmosphere is the sink okay the civil engineers revolution gave opportunity to whom opportunity to air conditioned mechanical engineers air conditioning engineers they got very good opportunity and their business economy has gone up like anything am i right the last 20 years the air conditioning engineers there was a large demand for air conditioning engineers but very recently everywhere investment cost is very reasonable but operating cost became very expensive am i right air conditioners then the civil engineers gave opportunity for the mechanical engineers and now these mechanical engineers uh, gave their revolution their powerful air conditioners they installed in the buildings they gave opportunity to energy engineers because operational cost is very high now no? understood you know this there is a very big uh, building where i had i did some consultancy work in the tidal park 1996 they have constructed very big high rise commercial building came in this city chennai city so that uh, that building that building initial investment was 100 crore for the construction of that building in 1996 you know how much electricity uh, bill they are paying as of now every year they are paying 32 crores one building is paying 32 crores their energy demand is that is that is uh, what is that demand for that building alone is some 15000 kva 15 megawatt it's required so now in the last 20 years in the one such road itself old mahabalipuram road it corridor itself some hundred such building came after this building so you know the air conditioning requirement for the buildings located in the old mahabalipuram road itself some hundred into 15 megawatt 1500 megawatt which is 10% to 15 percentage of the tamil nadu electricity consumption am i right one it corridor road the high rise buildings are there 
thousand five hundred megawatt, which is nearly ten percentage of the Tamil Nadu energy consumption. So you should under why I am telling you should understand the energy intensive in buildings. Energy that to sixty more than sixty percentage of the building which are going to be in two thousand forty are going we are going to construct. So that is why it is important if we know the importance of this, how much damage we are going to make in the environment and also and also what if you are able to protect this and also I, I explained about what this carbon dioxide level increase so whether uh, next two generation can live or three generation can live that is what if we, am I right in this planet whether next two generation can live or three generation so after that if we, but if there is a very fast sustainable action taken in all sectors that is why there is a goal <coughs> sustainable development goals 17 goals 17 goals the whole world is importing about this uh, sustainable development goals if it is properly taken then we can save this planet but if the measures is not taken properly definitely nobody can save this planet nobody can there ma maximum two two next generation two generation or three generation only can live in this planet even this corona pandemic it also one effect of this carbon dioxide increase in the planet we are so we were starving for oxygen no people were starving for oxygen cylinders because we made a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere am I right that is the this is also one outcome of this increase in carbon dioxide many such uh, pandemics are going to happen if this percentage carbon dioxide increases before man get extinguished before all the animals also before 600 lot of animals birds will get extinguished in this planet Okay, now you understood the need for this sustainable buildings. Understood? I got you. I think you got the importance of this uh, requirement. Okay, well, in this context, what small contribution I have made in this in the research in my research field? That's what I that I will tell very far. Now you understood the requirement, so you can understand this very easily. So these are the electric this, but the world is projecting. People, they are thinking people will understand in another 10 years, this awareness will come to all our human because we are intelligent people. We are all intelligent. So, this awareness will come in a large way to all educated people and we are we will move towards sustainable uh, resources for our energy generation. That is what I have told. Here I am showing how this renewable contribution will increase in the next few years. Next, till 2040, how this renewable contribution now it is in 2020 the almost now we nearly <coughs> nearly 25 percentage now we started using renewable energy for our requirement tamil nadu is using more than 40 percentage uh, renewables for our requirement but as a whole country is using nearly 20 20 percentage the many ma major developed countries they started using more than 30 percentage through renewables they all have taken mandatory measures that by 2040, more than 80 percentage of their energy requirement should come from sustainable sources like solar, wind. Most of the developed nations they took. But if we are, if we don't do it because our major population is there in two countries, if when our lifestyle increases without sustainable sources, they also cannot live. Developed country people also cannot live because we all these days they contributed for the. CO2 emission, if we go, we are going to contribute CO2 emission, nobody can save this planet. Yes, next slide. Yeah, sustainable architecture reduces the negative impact on the environment and human health, thus improving the performance during the building's life cycle. So, careful consideration is required towards water, energy, building material and solid waste. Waste disposal also, we, to how, to what extent we should recycle that without much contribution to the damage to the environment. If you, if you put all our waste outside, what will happen in the buildings? We are generating a lot of waste. If you put outside what? Any carbon-based material is there and uh, all this uh, food waste, if you put outside or any waste, that will generate uh, methane. If it is, don't recycle it properly. That methane is 21 times vulnerable than carbon dioxide. That means, the waste which are dumping in the landfill, no, if it is not recycled properly, the danger is 21 times than emitting carbon dioxide straight away. So, waste also to be recycled properly. 
so principles of economy of resources but when we use this all these waste utilization sustainable sources then the life become very easy but only initially we should we need some awareness and also lot of investment required towards this side then this operational expenditure will become less no we have to build a new world new world with the all sustainability then life will will become very very easy and smooth next slide yeah this is the kind we are our our next uh, in, in the near future our future buildings will be like this greener environment the building orientation is very important and the parametric design when you make the design all design should be passive construction and material also matters this building material also we need to some so there are three three things are there either if you all if the surrounding buildings are very green then the temperature itself will get reduced some water bodies in the building whenever you construct a new colony so it should be surrounded by lot of trees and some water bodies some micro climate you can create micro climate so that the air conditioning requirement will get reduced if it's a totally a city with a lot of buildings the temperature will automatically surrounding temperature will also increase and your air conditioning requirement will increase so you can create some micro climate okay krishan college you have you have very good zoo and the forest is there some small micro climate is there here but it is not there in the mount road am i right it is not there in the mount road so micro climate you can create and to what extent some material in the building material if you have insulation properly you can prevent the energy entry properly so material also one thing but there are so there are three ways you can live comfortably preventing the external heat entry one thing otherwise with the high thermal mass high thermal mass you can store the energy during the day time and that means very high thermal mass our old architecture they, they were very good civil engineers so those kind of building which will store energy at the night time if the temperature is very less that heat also can be used for heating internal heating so that is another some some climatic condition that kind of building structure will give better solution some conditions if it is totally interior from the sea day time it will be very hot night time it will be very cool like delhi jaipur all this desert area what day time it will be very hot night time it will be very cold so if you construct the building with the material which can store large quantity of heat that will be the ultimate solution without the space heating and cooling you can get you can create comfort both in night as well as day time so that is another but if it is totally always hot or always cool then this insulation is required so based on the climatic condition the type of material to be chosen am i right and another thing whatever we are doing is whether it is hot or cool we allow it inside and then with the powerful air conditioner with a lot of energy we will push back to the energy heat to the heat or cool to the our surrounding that is the third way am i right which is best the third way only we are doing now am i right the first and second are very good based on the climatic conditions and the loca location so it is the building and the building construction is highly site specific highly site specific so one one person mostly what happens the engineers they know how to construct the same way whatever they construct in chennai they will try in bangalore and delhi it is not good engineers should know about in which location they are constructing based on that what is the orientation what is the even in the same place if it is north facing house there should be a difference so all these things one should uh, understand and accordingly the building should be constructed so in the coming days the building the should be energy efficient and use of renewable energy and some storage concept that is what my research here after i am going to tell about few things about what i have done towards this passive architecture this energy saving and in the coming days everything is going to be automation am i right in building also totally automation people will not contact other persons in the near future everything we will talk with the machines only am i right that is that is how the world is moving all industry 4.0 when it industry 5.0 when it comes no person will talk with the other person only they will talk with the machines all iot will come okay that we cannot avoid because 
people will learn how what are the damage it is going to make with the industry 5.0 after that only they will give opportunity for sustainability afterwards am i right so we are now marching towards industry 5.0 what are all the damage we are going to make for the human we do not know how right now so the kind of damage for the health and everything we, we will know after 10 years after 10 years after that a new technology for, we will give opportunity for new technology so that is now anyway we are going for iot for smart buildings so all these things whatever things we need to have that uh, these are all the sustainable building environment but when we integrate the sustainable building the iot also every moment you should have the sustainability in your mind otherwise there will be a danger whatever development you make all scientists if they understand what is sustainability and if they make some invention it is useful for the society otherwise whatever knowledge they gain with that they try to invent and try to make business means it is a great disaster to the society it is a great disaster to the society yeah next slide yeah now i am coming to my research if you some 15 minutes i think i can take it some some 15 minutes i think i have spent for introduction because i want to tell more about the now i will go fast whatever i have done uh, in my in my research so my research is on thermal storage i from energy to i did some work in energy then i got interest in energy storage because renewables we are going to we, we understood there is a need to use renewable sources under when you use renewable sources why these renewables has not come into this society all our requirement all these years because it is not a continuous source it is all intermittent source intermittent source anything if you get uh, anything if you want all the time it should be available then only life will be comfort am right but uh, it will uh, the energy will be available only during the sun is available the night if it is not available we won't prefer but because of this environment danger only now we are going to the right direction but to make it useful solar energy you want to make it for every requirement how it is possible it is possible with the energy storage am i right for one thing i should uh, tell for any technology development for any technology development in this world are we going in the right direction or not whether we are making danger to the environment or we are going in a sustainable way whether we are going that whether the technology what you make whether it is happening in the nature directly whatever is happening in the nature is a perfect system so what any development to make what you need to do you should see how naturally happening so human system is also a natural thing it is not a man made machine natural things for any technology whether it's a civil mechanical electrical computer science electronics control and instrumentation if i put a stone on somebody immediately this hand is coming no control and instrumentation how perfect it is how perfect it is if you are living in a when a, uh, if you are in a december month if you ride in a bike in delhi city delhi city what will happen this uh, all our skin will become rough am i right what is happening this uh, blood will not allow blood circle that that our system heart will not allow blood to the top skin nerves because otherwise heat loss will be high to avoid heat loss the skin will become rough because blood circulation is not there so much perfect control system is there in our human system for every technology how, how this cells are this construction is with small tiny cells the civil engineers cannot make it the heart is a pump which will run for 120 years without any maintenance heart but we are damaging because that is why it is less uh, life otherwise if it is properly no maintenance required but automatically it, but the small pump no engineers can make such a pump which will without maintenance for some 45 years so so all this ultimatum is there now energy storage also we are taking food only some three times or two times am i right but we are able to manage how to use this energy for all our requirement that means we have very good storage system what kind of storage system is there in our human system if you look inward you will get the correct solution but otherwise whatever is available there in the surrounding if you start looking then you will get a half baked solution but then somebody will give better solution later so whatever is available in our human system is the ultimate solution for every technology every technology solution also human system how it stores energy if you start looking you will get ultimate solution you will get 
ultimate solution okay now i will give some solutions which i have uh, which i did as a research work so now you understood storage is required storage is required for what to use this renewable sources in an efficient way storage is required so there are so many types of storage electric electrochemical storage compressed air energy storage thermal storage super capacitors a lot of things are there uh, there but every storage when to apply you should know because now 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 also people are marching towards in a wrong direction energy storage means everybody who is what will come to your mind battery storage only will come to your mind am i right but uh, for now this building is uh, this building is cooled by some air conditioning system it is operated with what electricity but if you use you generate electricity from solar now it became very cheap now it becomes you can generate electricity for 2 rupees to 3 rupees per unit with the solar 3 rupees now it is cheapest form of electricity is what solar electricity but the cost became very high because storage is very expensive the storage is very expensive but we are all thinking about what electrochemical storage el battery storage or advancement in that lithium ion battery metal ion battery but it's all very expensive there are many of the resources are not available in our the basic resources are not available in our country we need to depend again uh, some of the foreign countries but i told you 40 percentage of the energy in the buildings is used for what building 40 percentage of the energy generated in the country is used for building in that in that 60 percentage is used for building cooling or heating so 60 percentage of 40 means 25 percentage of the electricity generated in the country is used for cooling or heating 60 percentage of 40 25 percentage is used for building cooling or heating so that means it is used for thermal applications so instead of storing the electricity for the operation of the compressor during the night time you can generate cool energy or heat energy which is when it is sunlight is available and then use store cool energy or heat energy instead of using electrical energy am i right that is the best solution that uh, that form of electric thermal solution is very cheap the form of thermal solution is very cheap so you need not bother about electrical energy storage you can bother about thermal energy storage which is very cheap so 25 percentage of the electrical energy storage it is possible through thermal mode like that some 10 percentage of the electrical energy requirement compressor for this compressing air you can use compressed to store air storage is a solution am i right so what application based storage is required but uh, foreign countries who are making lot of electrochemical storage will not teach you this so you will for all your requirement you will depend on what electrochemical battery which is very expensive so you should understand for thermal application thermal storage for compressed air requirement it should be compressed air storage so that is because it's a mechanical application which is static nothing which is very cheap which you can make it very cheap okay this is what i now now my research i will go very fast not i will not because it is very easily you can understand so this uh, thermal i my work is all this uh, my, my research also i got very good uh, publications citations and a very good h index because i am working on socially relevant area so suddenly 1995 i have published very good journals till 2005 nobody touched my paper nobody touched it my citation was very less suddenly i felt my papers got cited very much because there was a requirement came people understood about the storage my topic was storage 95 to 2010 nobody touched my papers but suddenly all my papers got repeated citation because the whole world understood the importance of storage that is why my my i got very good h index all citations is not because velraj's paper contribution is because suddenly to my luck my field got importance in the society my field got very good importance in the society so all my papers which were published in the 95 90 2000 and all got cited very much in the last 10 years last 10 years okay i will finish so now uh, my contribution i will tell contribution in developing passive storage system there are three ways you can store passive storage system so in the buildings how you can store energy efficiently i will tell 
very short and i will finish my lecture so this building civil engineers they they made the material very strength material very very good strength material in the building wall and they reduced the uh, thickness to very thin, thin wall so it is allowing uh, what this uh, sun's energy to prevent that you can introduce some phase change material that is what my concept introduce some phase change material which will change its phase around 24 25 26 based on the external and internal requirement you can select a very good phase change material and that material can be integrated in the walls so that it will melt and solidify it will not allow the internal room temperature to go beyond certain level comfort level so that is the easiest way am I right instead of very high thermal mass now we are going to give different solution so phase change material storage is the solution one of the solution in a passive construction passive construction so that is how it works and also for the if it is a very large building air conditioning it's all glass buildings glass buildings then you can store this anyway you want to use high high capacity that energy intensive compressor you need that energy intensive compressor also you can operate through solar energy and produce cool energy that energy can be stored in a very large thermal storage tanks and then that energy can be used for the during the night time so you can provide a pathway for using solar energy for all building applications am right either in the wall material you can bring or you can generate using high power high intensive compressor which is operated by solar energy during the sun uh, that is a uh, day time and produce this uh, cool energy and store it in a large storage tank. now all the with this these two concepts you can understand all these uh, things i will go very one by one you go okay these are a passive building passive concept now everything you can understand within a few seconds because i have given sufficient introduction next next so this uh, this is uh, the pcm the temperature variation fluctuations will be minimal because if you introduce this pcm material the fluctuations will be minimum next slide one the pcm 1 kg the heat storage capacity is tenfold than the other material several fold than the other materials next 10 to 20 fold next so you can peak shaving these are all the various materials available in the for building construction next slide Yeah, you do it fast. These are all the this PCM material. We can make it macro encapsulation and micro encapsulation. Next slide. Yeah, another five, minutes, two, three, three minutes. I have to finish. So encaps encapsulation is possible in various ways. This PCM material, how and all you can manufacture. Now this this market is having a very good scope. This yeah. Next. These are all the various material. Next slide. This PCM material you can make it as a board, wall board, and they keep it as a uh, wall board inside interior. You can make with this PCM based material. Next slide. These are the different uh, structural material with the PCM inside. Next, next. Yeah, PCM also can be integrated in different forms. Next. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, natural cooling with the night air is one concept. Night time you allow with the high that is with the fan. Compressor operation is very expensive. Fan operation is only one twentieth of the energy required for the compressor. So using the powerful fan, you circulate the nighttime cool air to the building so that the cool energy will be stored in this phase change material which are kept inside. That is night cooling concept. That is called night cooling concept. Next, these are all the... So we have also done in the experiment one uh, two buildings one with the pcm material other without pcm we got very good effect next slide so these are the this is the material we have chosen next next we have incorporated pcm in this panel and kept on the top what is the effect we are getting next slide okay next slide the, some good effect we got it we got some appreciable effect but still in summer time since the night early morning temperature is also if it is very high the PCM will not come back to its original state. Then it is a problem that will give a reverse effect. So you should select a very correct phase change material to incorporate. Otherwise, uh, 10 months it will give good effect. Two months it will give a negative effect. It will give a, because it should have, it should get a cycle. Night time it should come back to the 
solid state then only it will melt during the uh, day time next slide next slide these are all the how it is affected next slide next slide yeah the like this free cooling this energy this is inserting phase change material in the wall itself otherwise you can have a very big heat exchanger you can allow the night time air through this heat exchanger you can freeze it then day time you can circulate the air through this and get the that kind of that is called the free cooling next yeah this is the concept so here here you should store some pcm and the night time you should allow this air through this way day time this hot air will come through this and this will get cooled this is the free cooling concept next slide so this also we have tried uh, some experiments we have done in our ex college and uh, next slide so this concept next slide so this is the experiment we have done to explain this concept how it works next slide so like this one active storage system i have all told the solar energy we can use to operate the compressor and we can produce large quantity of cool energy during the day time in the tidal park i have done one good work uh, one consultancy work there i understood how it works that tidal park they have very good thermal storage system but still that uh, after that 100 buildings came no out of that 100 building only four or five buildings only introduced this concept okay i will tell this concept then i will tell why it has not been introduced with that i will finish okay this concept is next slide so next slide yeah they have the 93000 carpet 1000 meter square carpet area they require uh, this much uh, they are consumption is this much next slide their air conditioning requirement is 53 percentage of the total energy requirement next slide they need 6000 tons you know this for this building you may require some 15 to 20 tons their total requirement is 6000 tons 6000 tons but they have installed only 3000 tons and what they, they did the energy management only because night time the energy price is little less so for, not for solar energy utilization they have done they have done it for energy manage, demand side management so because air conditioning the maximum requirement will be there only for 2 hours in a day am i right but if there is no storage system you should, your capacity should match with the peak demand the peak demand is only 6000 tons but the morning time they require only 1000 ton 11 o'clock it may be 3000 ton 4 o'clock yeah i will finish in 2 3 minutes 4 o'clock they may require some uh, 3000 tons and evening they may require 1000 tons only but if there is no storage system this uh, they have to make how much capacity 6000 tons but intelligently they have made 3000 tons with uh, that uh, requirement is uh, matched with 24000 ton hour kilowatt is power kilowatt hour is energy ton is the capacity of air conditioning ton hour is the energy consumed so the ton hour so next slide so they have instead of 6000 tr only 3000 tr they have next slide they have 24000 ton hour capacity 24000 ton hour means if you are extracting from the storage system some 3000 tons it will deliver 8 hours understood the capacity i am telling if you are able to extract at the rate of 3000 tons how much how many hours it can deliver 8 hours so how it is made next slide next slide next slide yeah they have this kind of storage system in the tidal park four such tanks are there each tank capacity is 6000 ton, ton hour so they have made 24000 ton hour 24000 ton hour so now this is very much useful for solar thermal storage solar energy conditioning storage system next slide so this is this has lot of advantage those who started working in this they you will understand this now along with the, now the solar energy promotion these people will gain a lot in the coming years next so these are the four storage tank if you want to see this tidal park it is there but uh, out of some hundred such buildings in the omr only two or three intelligent people only have made this kind of storage system next slide yeah this is one okay next slide okay this with this i will st uh, stop but one more finally i will conclude why this uh, technology is not created good awareness among this public this uh, air conditioning companies will not tell about this technology because if they if they tell about this technology to the consumer they are 6000 ton 
marketing market will be reduced to what business volume will be reduced to what 3000 6000 will their business volume will get reduced by 50% it is their business ethics to get more business for their company so you should know how to make this awareness to be created for the benefit of the society for the benefit of the society the business people will not tell the truth Okay, with this. Thank you very much. Okay, next. Thank you so much, sir, for yes, sharing sir. This, uh, some last significant. Last slide, sir. Last, uh, you go. Yeah, the, you should go toward the traditional building. Next slide. Yeah, smart city concept. Okay. Now we are in a, in Anna University. We are constructing one building with all kinds of storage system so that it will be a sustainable building. Solar operated. We are making a building with the sustainable things. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for, uh, I have extended the time for another five minutes. Sorry for that.